Ballon d'Or 2006 by Nicolas Fouillat, a.k.a. Nicky Fu. It's all 50-50 Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, some of it coming from the Montagne de Rheem region, which is like the ooh bee's knees for growing grapes in Champagne. I just really want to know, how does the wine in the holy hand grenade bottle actually taste? Now when I drink champagne, I actually like to use a white wine glass. And the reason why I do that, and especially with prestige bottlings like this one, is you've got a big enough mouth to actually smell the aromas coming out of the wine. And when you get into this like high-end sparkling wine champagne zone, you really want to smell it because by God, it usually smells awesome. This wine uh, in particular, you know, when we're looking for fancy ass champagne, you're going to be spending around 90 to 100 and something dollars a bottle. This is no exception. It's in, I think it's about $130 a bottle, which is a lot of money for something you're going to pee out. And in fact, it kind of looks like pee if you look at the color here. Look at that. Anyway, let's dive into this tasting on this crazy bottle of fancy sparkling wine. On the nose. You know, it smells like vanilla cupcakes. Definitely vanilla cupcakes and like this little bit of a beeswax note. And then I get this kind of chemical aroma. I don't know how to describe it to you, but it's almost like petrol. It's more petroly than I know champagne to normally be. I'm always looking for that cheese note. It's always, like to me, champagne always smells a little bit like Parmesan cheese. And this one, for some reason is coming through a little more cupcakey and vanilla, but there is just this subtle twang of Parmesan cheese. Ah, so let's give this wine a taste. When I'm assessing sparkling wines, one of the things I try to pay attention to is that bubble finesse and how it feels across my palate. Now I tasted this wine yesterday, so it's totally lacking on bubbles today, but I did make note that when I tasted it yesterday, that it was also a very like reduced bubble finesse sparkling wine. Now, for something like Prestige Champagne and for something that's been aged so long on tirage, AKA they left it in their cellars for a really long time and then they released it, the 2006 vintage is pretty current. So it's probably gonna lose some of its bubble finesse over time. And in fact, if you are a collector of sparkling wines, you'll note that a lot of your older bottlings, 10, 20 years goes by, they become darker in color and they lose that bubble finesse. And that's something you have to emotionally go through as a wine collector. Me personally, I like a really like zappy bubble finesse on my sparkling wines. So I am a little sad when I don't taste that really nice fine bubble finesse, which this one unfortunately doesn't have. It didn't have it yesterday and it certainly doesn't have it today. The second thing I look for when I'm tasting a fine sparkling wine is that balance. I hate that word balance. Everyone's like, oh, it's balanced. What does that actually mean? Well, with this, I'm looking at how much of the fruit that I taste towards the front of the palate matches with the bitterness and the acidity that I get on the mid to back palate of the wine. So like, is there enough fruit to counterbalance that bitter note? Because a lot of these wines have a little bit of bitterness in the production method that they make sparkling wines, especially champagne, they leave, there's some skin, there's some phenolics that actually happen in the wines from the skins and seeds and it gets into the wine and you taste a little bit of bitterness. And you can resolve that flavor with uh, adding sugar, well, at having a little bit of dosage in the wine so it can have like up to 10 grams of residual sugar. This is a brute, so it might have up to 10 to 12 grams per liter of residual sugar, which is actually pretty low. But you could also do that with really nice ripe grapes. So what we look for when we're looking for super fine wines, at least this is what I kind of look for, is a pretty low dosage of balanced dosage, eight or less, six or less grams per liter of residual sugar, and then lots of fruit flavor that's coming through the ripeness of the grapes and not through the cheating of the sweetness, right? So um, with this wine, I think they did a pretty good job on the dosage. It's not tasting super sweet to me, but the balance of the fruit is a little bit off. 
This wine has a little bit more bitterness, has a little more like crunchiness on the mid to back palate, and uh, less fruit to balance that out. That's just what I'm noticing on this particular vintage. No hate, but hyper analysis, you know, when you're thinking about what is actually going on inside of this glass. The last thing I look for when I'm tasting wines like seriously, how's the finish different than the front of the taste? The front of the taste and the nose is definitely all this beautiful, like kind of tertiary flavors of like cupcakes and vanilla and petrol. And then on the palate, I actually get this sort of crunchy bitterness and this tingle in the back of my throat coming through on this acidity. Is that a matching, like, does the curtain match the carpets, you know? Like it, it tastes like what I think it should taste like. And for me, this wine, unfortunately, I love you, Pomodoro and Nikki Fu, but this wine for me falls a little short because I'm expecting a beeswax honey like cupcake experience and then I get served something a little bit different. So I don't know that I would say this is the best champagne I've ever had. And yet I would say this has all the traits of super high-end champagne that I love to find. And it's interesting. There's a lot that's changing right in, now in Champagne that's worth noting. And one of the things is, is you'll find a lot of the higher end producers who are making super exclusive bottlings that are really hard to get are actually leaning in this more like bitter, lean, tart fruit realm. So maybe Nikki Fu is actually like, hey, maybe we should go in that direction now because that's super cool and we wanna be cool too. So I don't wanna judge on this wine so harsh because maybe they're going through a transitionary period or, or whatever that is. So there you go. A weird Madeline version of an analysis of <laughs> Palm Door 2006. It is an excellent wine for $130. I think it's a beautiful color. I think it'll make anyone happy, especially just smelling this wine. Anyway, <laughs> if you guys like what you see, definitely uh, leave a comment if you want me to taste something else specific. Um, I may not do that because it's hard to find wines, but I'll definitely read what you're curious to learn more about. All right, until next time, I love you guys. I'm gonna go finish this bottle. Peace out.